Hello and welcome to the first episode of 2024 season of the Gem City Gridiron Roundup podcast. We will be talking a little bit about NFL free agency and the applications that we feel it had on fantasy football um, and our thoughts on that. And we might even dabble in on some uh, Gem City pennant as the draft did just take place uh, last weekend. Yeah, it was last weekend uh, or a week ago from Saturday, I think. Yeah, I don't even know. What yeah, cause we, was, cause we drafted before this. Yeah, we drafted before the Soul Series. So um, a week ago Saturday. All right. Uh, might as well go through the Soul Series to start off this. Sounds like fun. So, of course, it was a two-game set between the Dodgers and the Padres, which took place on Wednesday, March 20th at 4 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, uh, which, of course, everyone likes their baseball at that time. Hey, it was nice waking up and, you know, getting in the shower, having a cup of coffee on the road and, you know, watching a little bit of baseball before I had to go to a conference. I, I watched a couple innings each day. Yeah, so this one was pretty quiet. Um, as the very first game of the season, um, a lot of balls were going deep and then they would just stop and there was like no home run. There was a few home runs hit the next day, but I don't think there were any. Not the first. There were zero home runs in game one. So the story of this game was Jake Cronenworth was playing first base and in the eighth inning, a hot shot came towards him. I think it was off of Betts. No, it was, um, it was Gavin Lux. It wasn't even, I, I remember I was watching this part. Um, where his webbing broke on his glove. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, it just yeah, popped up. Popped through. And I was actually I was actually watching it and they were talking about it. Like it wasn't even that hard of a hit. Like the exit velocity of that was like 89 and some change. It wasn't even hard. that hard of a hit. Um so like it wasn't even like a crazy exit velocity um at bat. Just like took a it took a hop. He hit it right in the web of his glove, snapped it went right through and a couple runs scored. So yeah, that kind of was the tale of the um game one because the, the Padres were up um going All into game. that. Until yeah. the eighth. Yeah, until that happened. Um at first it just looked like he missed it. Yeah. Like it took a weird bounce and then they showed the replay and it went right through his glove. Yeah. Never have I seen that ever happen. <laughs> um yeah. I've seen it like go through like on a shortstop glove where the uh, gaps are a lot bigger. Mm-hmm. I've seen it like go through it, but I've never seen it like pop the glove open. Yeah, this is really weird. Spe- but... Especially not on a first baseman's glove where like ha- half of it is a catcher spent. Yeah, really weird. It's weird. Instance, but it's just really weird. Like it is opening day, like unofficial opening day. Um, because really opening day is is this coming Thursday. So, um. Yeah, it's it, really interesting. That's kind of mums the word because like they played in in Seoul, and then this week they had some uh, more tune up exhibition games. Um, so it's just a really weird occurrence um, for Dodgers and Padres. Now the next day was full of storylines. Um, first of all, the scandal of four and a half million dollars being stolen, maybe out of Shohei Otani's account, came out the very same day that the Dodgers were playing the Padres uh, for their second game of two in Seoul. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one was nuts. Be- just talking about the game, uh, Yamamoto got lit up yeah. in the uh, first inning. Uh, I think he did not get an out until like the fifth batter or something like that. Yeah, he faced the entire lineup. So, uh, faced nine batters. Not good. And he didn't give up a home run. Yeah, he just got he just got eaten apart. Just tick, yeah, there tick, were two tick, home tick, runs tick, in tick. this game. Mookie, Mookie had seventeen fantasy points. I know, dude. That dude's to, so good uh, on uh, the twenty first. Yeah, I from the shortstop position. Yeah, crazy, man. I wish I would have got him. One short. Uh, Musgrove also got lit up. He just did it in one inning longer. Uh, <laughs> so he didn't take and the then loss it was, uh, he was so bad. The other guy was so bad. Yeah, and then it was just a, uh, you know, a Big Ten mm-hmm. football game score. 15 to 11. 
That must have been a uh, you know Iowa versus you know Penn State or something. Two terrible. Or Purdue teams. the Boilermakers. Purdue, Purdue versus Iowa with eighteen punts. I've heard Wisconsin's offense is just horrendous as well. Yeah, not as bad as Iowa. <laughs> Either way. Okay, but, uh, Mookie Betts. Uh, he has like six hits already this season, insane. so that's cool. Yeah. On uh, it was like six hits in nine at bats or something like that. Yeah, it was kind of crazy because I'm playing uh, Valdez, and we both had some Padres and uh, Dodgers. Um, I had Machado and Tatis, who eh, 17 points for two days, um, but he had Cronenworth, who had a nice day too. And then he had the the glass now the the Dodgers uh, the the Dodger duo glass now got points and then he got the save, so he he's up a little bit. Yeah, I'm down thirty nine start the day <laughs> yeah, to start whatever. the week. This week, you're not really out of it. the The, the fantasy baseball season doesn't start till about week ten. That's you're about halfway through the season. You you can make your moves then. It. In week 10 of the NFL season, you're toast. <laughs> it doesn't start off week 10 in baseball. Okay, draft recap. Um, let's see. You filibuster. I'm going to go grab a drink. All right. Don't really know what to talk about in the draft too much, except for the fact that Bill um, auto-drafted, and actually his team did not turn out too bad. I will remind you that if you have players eligible for IL, it is important to put them on the IL, uh, uh, you know, free up some spots, get some players in there who actually do play because that's a good idea. Let's see. Looks like plenty of people are utilizing the IL so far. Somehow, miraculously, Bill only has one player who's eligible for the IL after uh, the draft. The big news, or the headline today, besides the Otani stuff, is that uh, Seager and Josh Jung are both expected to start opening day, so that's cool. So, uh, Otani put out a statement today. I did not have time to listen to it because I was driving all day, but... Did yeah, you? I did. I actually have it pulled up right here. Um, obviously, he's got a new interpreter. <laughs> um, but <laughs> that, that dude looks like like the most grown up square of an interpreter I've ever seen. The new I one? saw it on my Instagram. Yeah, but I didn't listen to the whole statement. Yeah. So, oh, Jay's closer, Jordan Romano, likely head to the IL. Um, quote. Um, on a personal Ooh, 15 day IL, sorry. Oh, Tony said, I'm very saddened and shocked that someone I've trusted has done this. Um, I have never bet on baseball or any other sports or never have asked someone to do that on my behalf. I have never went through a bookmaker to bet on sports up until a couple days ago. I didn't know this was even happening. Um, four and a half million dollars gone from his account from uh, his former interpreter. Um, there's different sayings that um, the the interpreter said that a representative reached out inquiring about my potential involvement in sports betting. Never realized that this was a media inquiry. Um, the two-way star logged into his own computer and sent eight or nine transactions, all in the increments of 500000 to a Southern California bookmaker named Matthew Boyer, Boyer over the course of several months. Um, Otani has said that all of this is a complete lie. It has been um, theft. Um, so he's denying all involvement in it. Um, yeah, not a good look for baseball. Uh, so we'll wait and see. Um, if anything, um, they're not going to let Otani fall on this one, even if he was, I don't know, Probably not betting him on baseball. Um, but it's hard to say. It's hard to say. There's going to be a lot of investigations. So, um, but from the report is that he doesn't like, he doesn't follow many other sports. Um, 
but that's what his teammates are saying too. He doesn't yeah. actually even watch other sports besides baseball. Yeah, I mean, he, I, there was stuff where like, um, because like they are in Los Angeles, so he does mingle with you know professional athletes, and I think he did go to a Rams game, um, but who cares? I mean, unless he's actually betting. But like, here's the thing: like, he can bet. He just can't bet on baseball. It's just like the NFL. Like you're allowed to place bets. You're just not allowed to bet on the NFL or be on NFL property making those bets. Like you can't be making bets in the locker room, but you could be at it, home making bets on like an NFL player can go bet on college basketball or MLB baseball. Like that that's in their agreement. They can do that, but they can't obviously bet on the NFL and they can't it, bet on team property. The issue is um, it is illegal in the MLBPA to use illegal bookies. And yes. And while, yes, so or, that uh, is California illegal. is not a sports betting legal state. state. That is correct. It so is illegal. It is still illegal to do so, which violates the MLB um, Players Association CBA or whatever. Which is crazy because I, I still can't believe California and Texas and they're not online for sports betting yet. That's just huge markets. Uh, but. It is. I'm guessing for these state legislatures, the money is just not right for them. They're, they don't see it as a benefit yet, or they haven't figured out what they want to use the money on would be more likely. Yeah, I don't know. But eventually, um, marijuana and sports gambling are going to be legal in every same. single yeah. state. Yeah. But yeah, the crazy. Um, but yes, it is illegal in California. So, um, but is it legal for ML- MLB players that are in state sanctioned? Like in Colorado, like, Colorado, yeah, that is so, legal. You just can't bet on baseball. Yes, yes. So same thing. Like I mean, so it's just like the, like it, like a Rams player, they can bet, but they're not allowed to when they're in California. Or uh, Pete Rose came out and he said, "I wish I had an interpreter." <laughs> <laughs> that actually happened. Oh man. Uh, in other news, we, we still don't 100% know what's going to go on with this Otani stuff. Um, I don't think he's going to be suspended. Even, even if he did it, I think they're going to go through their due diligence just because he is such a huge uh, face of baseball. Um, I would be shocked if he did it just based on sorry, the little bits about his character that we do know. Mm-hmm. Like, when does this dude have time to gamble that much money? Like, he pitches at any hits, and like I mean, it's just it's just so he's convenient. got too much to do to be messing with that. Yeah, but sports betting is so convenient. Like it's it's everywhere. Like like well, not in California. It's not. You yeah. have to like go out and find a bookie. And uh-huh. Apparently, this bookie was also advertising that like Shohei bets with me. You should too. Yeah, but here's the because thing: the like Shohei, Shohei's Shohei. name on him. Shohei can bet as long as he's not in California. He could be he, he could be up in um Washington and he can make a bet. Like he just right, can't but the bookie was based out of based Orange County, California. California. Yes, that is yeah, I'm just I'm I'm relaying the other the other side is that they're able to bet as long as they're not in California. But yeah, there is the bookmaker or bookie is an illegal um person in California. Yep. So. Okay. Uh, did you see the banning on the hip toss tackle? What does that mean to you? The hip drop, the hip drop tackle is just another way that the, eh, I mean, it's another way to get injuries out of the game. Like it's, it's just a, a, a form of using your entire body weight on a defender trailing and dropping them from the hips. I mean, we see a lot of ACL tears. We, we're seeing a lot of high ankle sprains from this hip drop tackle technique. So just another way that they're going to have to, Defenders are going to try to have to tackle. Um, that that's pretty much the gist of it. Just trying to another way to get more injuries out of the game. I I don't just don't see how. It's just like roughing the passer. Like people are gonna, they're still gonna tackle that way, and if they get called for it. They are gonna get called for it. I mean, there's nothing. I mean, it's like a, it's a 15 yard penalty. It's not. I don't know. It's it's a weird circumstance with them, you know, banning this tackle, but it's going to take a lot of time to teach these players again a different way to tackle. Like they've been doing it for so many years, um, 
trying to be off on the side and I don't know. It's I'm indifferent on it. Obviously we don't want mm-hmm. to see people to get hurt. That's part of the game, but can you prevent it? You know, you really can't prevent it. You can hit your head on the ground, like you hit your head on the ground and you still gonna have a concussion. Doesn't mean, you know, someone ran into you with the crown of their helmet and you got a concussion. So, I mean, there's still injuries in the game and it's that you can't control. They're just trying to control it to the best of their abilities, I guess. In my opinion. Kirk Cousins signs a four-year deal with the Atlanta Falcons who don't have Arthur Smith anymore. This is huge news. Desmond Ritter gets offloaded to uh I don't remember where, but he gets uh, Arizona. away. Arizona. There you go. Poor, Ron- to Arizona. Uh, poor Rondell Moore. That's actually a pretty all right trade, too. The Falcons are real. Uh, the Falcons have made a lot of moves this offseason so far. Uh, that is huge for Kyle Pitts's value. As we all know, Kirk Cousins loves himself a tight end. Mm-hmm. Um, Drake London's value goes through the roof as well. Uh, they also signed, uh, I know we're jumping through. We can just talk about the Falcons. They also signed Darnell Moody. Um, so they have a, a whole new crop of decent players. Um, so a very um, friendly options for Kirk Cousins. But Dalton, how many? Two-part question. How much money do you think Kirk Cousins has made? How much has he made already? In his career. And how many playoff wins does he have? Uh, one playoff win. That is correct. And 130, 186 million. Well, this contract was 180 million. So, um, but in guaranteed money, um, he has made over four hundred million dollars in gar- in guaranteed money off. Because he finished his rookie contract and then franchise tag twice. He got the franchise gar- tags. Yep. Full. Yeah, two franchise tags fully guaranteed. He also got a fully guaranteed contract in Minnesota. And then he got uh over a hundred million guaranteed in this contract. Wow. Fully gu- yeah. Crazy. Like four hundred win four hundred million and he's gonna won one playoff game. Daniel Jones has just as many. But man, is wins. he gonna gonna rock the eleven o'clock window? Hmm. And hell uh, yeah. They're gonna be the great Falcons on the red, are like great on the red immediate, zone. Immediate immediate NFC South favorite immediately. I like <laughs> I, they probably don't have, they don't have those totals up yet, but um, I would easily say they're the betting favorite when, when the odds yeah. come out, not even close should be, should be, but yeah, uh, Atlanta has made a ton of moves. Do you know, most notably, edge? most notably Arthur Smith. Bye bye. Uh, He's bye now bye. in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Maybe that's a good segue. <laughs> which uh, which it kind of made me almost want to accept the trade I got offered the other day because uh, Arthur Smith, I don't want anything to do with that guy. Artie. Artie. Uh, he makes me want to cuss on live podcast. Man. Live pre-recorded podcast, but I won't. I, I bashed him so hard in – in Atlanta, and this is what I get. Yep. Segue. The uh, Steelers move on from Mason Rudolph, who goes to the Browns. Uh, Mason Rudolph is a Tennessee. Okay, Mason Rudolph's a Titan, and um, Kenny, Kenny Pickett. Pickett gets traded to the Eagles. Eagles. Correct. And the... Um, Steelers sign Russell Wilson on a free. Yep. And they trade for Justin Fields for Diddly Poo. Yep. Literally. A ham sandwich. Yeah. With a side of Diddly Poo. Um, I mean, Pittsburgh played it right. You know, they got the cheap quarterback um, and then, you know, traded for um, a quarterback. A little bit more expensive one. A little more expensive one, but they can eat that when their entire quarterback room is around. 22 to 23 million dollars um that's on the cheap so i do expect both of them to play this year um but it it would not be surprising if russell is the starting quarterback for a certain period of time until 
whether they're out of the playoffs or they're not performing well, or if Russia's just killing it and they're in the playoffs, he'll stick with them. But yeah, I, I really don't know. I mean, I don't see how you don't trade for Justin Fields and not play him at some point this year, but I could be wrong. Because he is going if into... Russell, if Russ is solid right out the gate, then it's fine. You yeah. Just Justin Fields as a backup. Yeah. I saw a meme. It's um, the... Um, someone had told Russell Wilson that, hey, do you know uh, Mike Tomlin's never had a losing record? He says, let's ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sam Howell traded to the Seahawks. Uh, they traded Howell in a fourth and a sixth this year to the Seahawks in exchange for a third and a fifth this a fifth round pick this year. Um I think this is a great deal for the Seahawks as we will we all know Sam Howell threw for like five thousand yards last year. And took sixty sacks, yes. Um, um I actually really like this for the Seahawks. Yeah I mean they, they get a competent backup to Geno Smith. Um and Geno Smith obviously is out of short contract still. Um and so it is good for them. It is good for Washington because they have made the move to their current backup quarterback now for Washington is Marcus Mariota, which I believe leads to them picking Jalen Daniels in the NFL draft, kind of mirroring your your quarterback one and quarterback two. Um, but I think that's a good move for Seattle. They get a young quarterback that has shown that he can do it in some circumstance. Don't get me wrong. I love Drew Locke, but Drew Locke is now – there's there's a, a huge quarterback in – um, running back shake up across the NFL this year. Um, and Drew Locke is now in uh, the Giants. So we'll see how that works out. But um, yeah, not a bad move for Seattle to acquire a younger quarterback, um, but a competent one that can come in if worst case scenario. Mac Jones is now Trevor Lawrence's backup. And I think that's about all we have to say on that matter. Yeah. Quarterbacks, I mean, getting a little nervous um i've been listening to a lot of podcasts like the nfl is they 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 think they don't have a quarterback problem they think it's a developmental problem that the nfl is just well if what are you doing for me now if you can't win in the first two years they just kind of kick you to the curb like there's only been like three first round quarterbacks since like 2015 that are still like starting quarterbacks um and people just mm. kick him to the curb pretty quick, and that it, it is what it is. And well, it's because of the low contract value nowadays. We don't mm. have the um, um, Sam Bradford albatross deals anymore. I don't know. They're getting more expensive. I mean, Dak wants sh- shoot sixty million dollars. Well, I'm talking about like... the rookie deals. Yes, the rookie deals. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Baker Mayfield signs a very lucrative contract back with the Buccaneers. You yeah. love to see it. I do in love to all see actuality. That. that is a really good fit, and mm-hmm. I do like Baker. I do. I think that's a good fit too. Like, um, they might also be slight fav- could be favorites in that division as well. But I think the the Falcons will have them. Um. A follow the money story. Gardner Minshew signs with the Raiders, two years, twenty five million, fifteen million guaranteed. Uh, they don't really got much else going on in that quarterback room. They do have that one dude, Aiden the O'Connell. rookie that I don't remember his name, Aiden O'Connell. Yeah, but for me, it's a little bit of follow the money. That's a lot of money if to pay a backup. Yeah, I think he obviously is going to be going to camp with the chance to start. Um, unless Aiden O'Connell has gotten a lot better. We, we've seen Minshew. We've seen him do it. He's done it in two separate places, um, two and a half separate places. Um, but he 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 may just be the new Ryan Fitz Ryan Fitzpatrick man, like bounce around, win a bunch of games, mentor other quarterbacks. I could just see that be Minshew for the next half decade. Saquon Barkley signs a very nice deal with the Eagles, which is scary. Um, that the Eagles can keep doing this with mm-hmm. all this talent. Um, I think I saw a stat that like uh, Barkley plus AJ Brown plus uh, Hertz plus Smith uh, plus Goddard, Devonte Smith and Dallas Goddard are all cheaper than Dak Prescott's contract. Yeah. Um, good job, Jerry. Great job, Howie. 
Oh, AJ Dillon re-signs with the Packers. I forgot about that. And the Packers also picked up Josh Jacobs. Big contract, yep. Gus Edwards goes to the Chargers on a two-year deal. Austin Eckler goes to the Washington Commanders, yeah, uh, which this, kind of tanks yeah. Brian Robinson's value, and it kind of takes um, Eckler's value a lot. Yeah, I think Eckler's going to be okay still, but, I mean, we're going to get into this running back roulette, man. Um, so many running backs moved places. Um, it's just going to be a very interesting landscape. Um, where these guys are going to go. We've already, you know, Barkley and Gus and Eckler. Um, Joe Mixon down to Houston, which is super interesting. Um, Antonio Gibson to the Patriots for real money. Yeah, for, for real money. Yeah, surprisingly. So um, that's a big one. Um, Derrick Henry to the Ravens is the huge. largest of these. That is an yeah. amazing fit for that offense. It is an amazing fit. It's super scary. I mean, you got Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry in the backfield. Super excited to watch that. Not as a, a Steelers fan, but I'm excited to see what that kind of looks like. Um, you get Zach Moss to Cincinnati. Um, interesting move yep. there. Um, Aaron Jones to the Vikings. Um, yep. I think that. Still don't really think that's settled yet at the Vikings backfield, but and they could take a rookie, but I mean I mean they're gonna I mean Aaron Jones is 30. I and mean, you get you get uh, another lesser move. Um Devin Singletary moves on. Now he's at the Giants. Don't get me wrong, they're gonna add a, a back probably as well. But you know, Devin Singletary's done it in two spots now. So he's a big name. Tony uh, Pollard. Sorry. Yeah, Tony Pollard. Um, Tony Pollard yeah. somehow gets like more money than Derrick Henry. He's the youngest, um, so he should get more, most, yeah, he is more money. Um, Derrick Henry is 31. So um, I think Josh Jacobs might actually be the youngest, but uh and DeAndre Swift, Swift also gets like the same deal as Pollard. Mm-hmm. Um which is I think it's Swift. a good move for Chicago. And we can talk about yeah. Chicago because they've made a lot of moves. Obviously, we've talked Go about ahead. the just we've talked about the Justin Fields things that they have moved on for him from him. They did sign a pretty lucrative running back contract with DeAndre Swift. They have DJ Moore, and then they saw the um take over the contract and trade for Keenan Allen, which this may be the best setup a rookie quarterback's ever come into, um, based on the at least offensively, the weapons around him, they have a decent defense. They have kind of shored that up last year. Um, they do need some help on the offensive line, but I mean, the weapons of, you know, DeAndre Swift, um, you still have decent running, other running backs in Rashawn Johnson and Khalil Herbert. You have DJ Moore, you have Keenan Allen, you have Cole Komet, you sign another veteran in um, Gerald Everett. So, I mean, you're very well equipped. So, like, this is. I think I think the odds on favor now is like it's like minus four thousand to for Caleb Williams to go number one. Um even though he has said in the past he doesn't want to go to Chicago. But I think they're making a play here and they also have the number nine pick, so it would not surprise me um for them to take Caleb and then to maybe take a tackle at nine um or take some input and take another player. Um, and their wide receiver because Keenan Allen is older and they could take another receiver and kind of shore that up as well. But yeah, um, definitely a big situation for Caleb to come in. I don't think um, unless they believe Caleb's not the guy and they still trade down and, you know, take another I think guy. you take Caleb Williams if you're the Chicago Bears. When's the last time they had like a legit quarterback? I don't know that they ever have had like a legit, legit quarterback. Jay Cutler. <laughs> That's as close as I've ever gotten. I think he's the leader in um, franchise history for yards and touchdowns. And stuff. Probably. Yeah. And they hated him the whole time he was there. Man, J- JJ, man. Yeah, good, good J. But, yeah, I, th- I think you got to take Caleb Williams, um, especially after trading Justin Fields. Um, I think that's the most surefire bet you can make, and surefire bets on quarterbacks aren't a first shot or sure thing. So you better hope you get it right. Obviously, it's kind of how it goes. But I think it's a pretty good situation for Caleb to come in and pretty much be ready to succeed right away. 
the the Chargers basically get rid of their entire offense. Uh, Gerald Everett's gone. Keenan Allen's a bear. Uh, they cut Mike Williams. He was he's a jet um, now. He was contract fodder. Like they had to get rid of him to drop some wages, and now he's a jet. It was uh, funny how all the defensive guys took the restructured money, and all the offensive guys said no. Which means so. the Chargers are just going to reload mm-hmm. in the draft because yeah. they don't have a choice otherwise. Yeah. So, uh, Joe yeah. Mixon in, in Houston is a great fit too. Interesting fit. Yeah. Really good. Um, you're getting CJ Stroud. And I mean, we saw what they did with Devin Singletary, who's a, who's a pretty competent running back. You do get Joe Mixon in there to pair with Nico Collins and Tank Dell and Dalton Schultz. Noah Brown resigns. Noah Brown. Noah Brown's a very, uh, sle- um, He's a good NFL player. Like, not, I mean, he had some good fantasy weeks, but like, odds are you're probably not playing Noah Brown. But like, the the type of player he is, really good. Would not surprise me if they, you know, bring in another wide receiver as well. They're trying to give Shroud as many options as possible. And their defense is looking good too. So, um, very surprising spot for Joe Mixon. Um, he was going to be cut by Cincinnati. And then Cincinnati said, How about you? You know, here's a seventh round pick. Just, 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 just take it. We'll, we'll take them off your hands. Um, and so Joe Mixon does make his way down to Houston, which is going to be a fun fit um, in that offense, especially for fantasy purposes. Uh, Gabe Davis signs a big money deal to go down to Jacksonville, uh, which means Calvin Ridley is not coming back to Jacksonville. Obviously, the Jags had him on a very uh, cap friendly deal. Mm-hmm. And Ridley wanted a lot more money, which did he get it yet? Yes, five years, ninety-two million to Tennessee. So Tennessee yeah, has huge reloaded. Contract. Yep. I'm not sure what Tennessee's doing. They're definitely uh, they see got a if... bunch of dudes that they can throw to, but no one's going to. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's they're doing it right. I mean, they have the rookie quarterback or rookie contract quarterback. They're trying to see what they got in Will Levis. They have they have a running back that they paid a decent amount for and Tony Pollard. They have Tasha Spears, who's a good second year running back. They have DeAndre Hopkins. They have um, Calvin Ridley. So they're giving him all the weapons that they can possibly get to see if Will Levis is the guy. Um, could he be the guy? Who knows? Um, very small sample size last year, but they're giving him the chance to show it. If not, We'll see if some Mason Rudolph again. Mike Evans signs a deal to uh, finish his career with the Buccaneers, basically. Yes, good for Which him. Is awesome for him. I, I think I think Baker and Evans were kind of a, a combo package. I think uh, Mike really wanted Baker, and that says a lot um, that they got Mike's contract done first, so they could pay um, um, pay uh, Baker as well. I think that's a good contract for them, um, both sides. So. Jerry Judy traded to the Browns. Um, yep. Basically just a depth piece at this point. Uh, if Jerry Judy can turn his career around, that'll be cool because he's is obviously still a really good athlete. I mm-hmm. uh, just has not put it together in Denver. Yeah, that's enough on that one. I mean, it's just uh, try to find a new home. People are trying to, try to take someone else's trash to see if they can find some treasure. Yeah, Deontay Johnson traded to the Panthers, not trash. Uh, not there trash. Just wasn't a, there just wasn't a... a there's too much going on in that Pittsburgh offense for Arthur Smith to figure out. So they needed to move some pieces because uh, they don't like talented receivers. Can you name? So. Okay. Can you name? Let's see. I'll give you. If Can you game three? Can you name three wide receivers on Pittsburgh? Um, I can name at least team, four. And I'm forgetting his name. He was from Georgia. Yeah, that's correct. I'll give you the easy one. That's George Pickens. Okay, George Pickens. <laughs> Good luck guessing um, these, these next. Uh, is Richie James still on that team? No, Richie James is uh, not. Antonio Brown? <laughs> no. Mike Wallace? No. Um, I'll, um, Heinz Ward? I'll give you uh, the three that three other. Lynn signs. Swan? The three others I know. Um Plaxico Burris? Uh Calvin Austin. The third. Okay. Not familiar. Van Jefferson. Heard of him. And Quez Watkins. Also That's, Georgia? 
Uh, he well, he played with Philly. He might have been from Georgia, but he played with Philly the past two years. Um, like a fifth, the fifth wide receiver option option for the. I don't know, man, yeah. but yeah, and obviously Pat Fryer with Patty, Patty F. But yeah, it's it's gonna be, and then I, I mean it's gonna run through Najee and Jalen Warren and Pickens. Like that's kind of what's gonna happen. But yeah, so so much news to sift through. There's still some. There's actually uh, Devonte Parker to the Eagles, which is. Interesting. Yeah. Well, and is. then just as we suspected, as I basically guaranteed, Michael Pittman Jr. gets the big re-sign deal. Yes, he does. That had to oh, happen. One of my favorite, my favorite signings. There, I mean, we didn't talk about two quarterbacks because we talked a couple about backup quarterbacks. Jameis Winston to Cleveland. Love it. Um, that's fun. Um, but actually the under the radar one that I really like, Joe. Black go oh, to the Colts. Um, yeah, to back up and to back teach up Air, uh, Air Richardson. Yeah, Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson. <laughs> to play. Yeah, um, like big arm talent. Like Blacko can sling it. Um, that like Richardson loves to do that. A good mentor, um, and a co- a, a competent backup who, if Richardson gets hurt, which he got hurt last year, um, like you're gonna have a guy to come in and help. And not have to change a whole lot on the offense. Like obviously Richardson's going to run the ball a lot, but they're going to be able to make it work with Flacco. Like I think that's one of the most underrated signings of free agency. I do think that is a really great fit. It doesn't match like starting quarterback to backup, but that didn't happen last year either. They had Anthony Richardson and Gardner Minshew. It's just a good head coach and good offensive philosophy um, that they were able to adapt. And the Colts weren't terrible. Minshew got you know was average at best but you know they kept him in it so um, i think joe flacco is a good signing for the colts and he was like the last quarterback to kind of sign when I mean, he got good money and uh dalton schultz resigns with the texans three years 36 million pretty sure he was injured for a lot of last season um but who's uh that, who's that again sorry dalton schultz no he played most of signs Okay, Dalton. but yeah, he he's a pretty good op- option at a uh, tight end, especially in like super, super tight end. Yeah, there's one wide receiver that is still currently unsigned, which he's probably just going to sign after the draft. Um, is Tyler Boyd? He's a he's a free agent. He has not been um offered contracts yet or anything. Man, when's the um, last time you thought about Sterling Shepard in a serious manner? Last year. He used to be such a great like last round of the draft flyer. Pick. Oh, I know. Um, Odell Beckham Gallup visited is still out there. Uh, Odell visited uh, Miami this week. Um, Michael so that, Thomas is still out there. Michael Thomas. DJ Shark. A lot of this is going to come into fruition like after the NFL draft. Like, who is going to kind of right. sure up their wide receiver core? Who's going to take more like day three wide receivers? Um, yeah. So that's going to be interesting as well. Um, KJ Osborne goes to um, New England. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, I don't really care about what New England does really because <laughs> they don't offer anything in fantasy usually. So, yeah, it's yeah. Oh, I've also heard this too. Like, um, because someone's gonna sign this guy, and like he's a good football player. He just runs a lot of cardio routes, but that's Marquez Valdez Scantling. It would just be <laughs> absolutely asinine um, for him to go to Buffalo. Um, just duly because he dropped so many passes from Aaron Rodgers, so he might as well drop so many passes from Patrick Mahomes, and so he might as well drop passes from Josh Allen, like three of the best quarterbacks that we've ever watched throw the deep ball, and he still can't catch them. So he might just go to <laughs> Buffalo just to annoy, annoy us. But uh, he's a good football player. He did. He, you know, he did uh, make some big uh, catches down the stretch in the playoffs for Kansas City. Um, that boy can run. That boy can run. I, I wonder what his steps are during a game because he just runs a lot of cardio. <laughs> so a lot, a lot of vertical routes for uh, Mr. He knows in, what MBS. what treadmill feels like. So he just, just run down, just run as fast as you can in a straight line and then just veer off to the sideline. We'll get you in about two plays later. Just kind of. Forest. Just a nice track. 
But yeah. Uh, did you see that a team from Mexico City came up and beat the Yankees that had Robinson Cano and Trevor Bauer on it in a <laughs> spring training game? Oh man, you think Trevor Bauer's ever gonna get back in? He might. I don't know. I. I don't know, man. If someone wants to sign him, good for them. He won't be on my fantasy team. Yeah, it's just it is too gross. Yeah. Um, speaking of gross, let's talk about tight ends. Um, a couple of tight end moves. Um, a couple of the biggest ones. The three. The the three. The triple triumvirate of tight ends from Seattle last year. Will Disley leaves. He goes to the Chargers. Colby Parkinson goes to the Rams. And Noah Fant re-signs to stay with Seattle. So that's gross. Nothing. Um, Zach Ertz, Washington. Washington Commanders. Um, Mike Gesucki, Cincinnati. I see what Hunter, you did there. Um, Hunter Henry re-signs with the Patriots. A good fit there. Hayden Hurst um, with the Chargers. Um, and obviously Dalton Schultz was the biggest one. Irv Smith to the Chiefs. John o. Smith to the Dolphins. Um, and that is all she wrote, unless you want to, you know, want to listen, talk to free agents like Logan Thomas, Jeff Swain, Robert Tunyon, Farrell Brown, Josiah Duara, Ross Dwelly, Anthony Fersher. Stop me when you, you don't know anybody. Um, Jimmy Graham, Bryson Hopkins, Jesper Horstead, Tyler Croft, Mercedes Lewis, Sean McKeon, Nicole Pruitt, Kevin Rader, Brady Russell, Eric uh, Seibert, CJ Uzoma. Oh, you know that name. Nick Vanette, Trevin Wesco, Mitchell Westcock, and Kenny Yaboa. Your boy. <laughs> Your boy. Um, so a tight, a little um, tight end talk. <laughs> uh, happy almost opening day. Yes. Um, I am going to Rocky's opening day, so that's cool. Yeah, uh, when is that? April 5th. April 5th. Who are they playing? Rays, Tampa. Doesn't matter, Bay. they're going to lose. Uh, it's at home. You never know what's going to happen on opening day at home for the Colorado Rockies. Did you see what the Rockies uh, over-under is? Uh-uh. It is. Uh, for for this, win, win totals. Right, I understand what... You mean, yeah, they are. I just don't know what it is. 67? They are so bad, man. Um, I would say 67. 60 and a half. 60 and a half? 60 and a half. I'd probably take the over. They're really good at home. Yeah, Every year. they are. They're pretty bad. You're telling me they're not going to win 30 games at home? <sighs> Yeah, I don't know. They're Yeah, but I mean they can't win on the road. Like that's that's fine. Yeah. It's Let's see. Opening day. I think I think the I think the A's are like 57 and a half. Yeah, the A's are way down there. Let's see. Friday, April 5th. There's no way they have the starters out for that yet cuz that's like a week away, but or the starting pitcher. Oh man, they do have probable pitchers up already. On ESPN? For uh the April 5th game, though. Oh, Rockies who, home opener. Who you got? Austin Gomber and Zach oh. Littell, who the Rays um got from the Giants. They're turning him into a starter. I do have one. Which means he's gonna be good. I do have one Rocky on my my fantasy team currently. Is it a Chris Bryant believing? It is not. It is uh Nolan Jones. Uh, Milwaukee and the Mets are even money right now. Freddie Peralta versus Jose Quintana in New York, I think. Yep. Yeah, Oakland has the uh, lowest, 57 and a half. I think if I had to pick, I I think if I, like, that's a pretty good bet to take on Milwaukee even money against uh, the Mets. And it's the very first game of the season. Mm. Or uh it's the very first game on opening day. Oh, okay. I should say. Uh probably Freddie Peralta over five strikeouts and a Milwaukee win. Freddie Peralta, yeah. Man. 
It's That's right around the take. corner, man. Baseball, but the couple NFL. Well, a couple days, but the NFL will not stay out of the news. The NFL will not sleep. NFL is king. They stay in the news every month. So next month, NFL draft, baby. Yep. So, but I am going to sleep. You're going to sleep right now. Yeah. Oh, I drove like seven hours today. Oh. I do have a proposition off air for you. Yeah. Maybe maybe if any else wants to go, um, I'll run it by you real fast to see if anybody wants to do it. Next year, Indianapolis Combine. Interesting. Do you know approximately how much that event costs? Uh, it is free to go to the Combine. Really? Yes. Uh, they have like the NFL uh, pass, just like it's what they use for the NFL draft. Because the NFL draft is free as well. Um. So, I'm proposing we go to Indy for the combine. This could be the last year the combine is held in Indianapolis. Oh, so it'd be fun to get a few people to go, split an Airbnb, do the combine. I don't really have anything on my uh, 2020 travel list for next year. So, uh, so yeah, we'll we'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk about it. And but I wanted to get the bug in your ear. Other people in the league. Um, that we try to get a, a few people to go. That'd be kind of fun. Um, and just, especially dynasty people. If, if if they're in the dynasty community, um, that would be kind of fun to go to the combine with folks that are in the dynasty league. But just, put, right. that in, well, just put that in your ear. This has been a fun mixed episode. I We're not really sure on the regularity of this just because yeah. I'm lame and it's still the off season. But uh, here's your first episode of the year. Peace.